Hey guys, it's Darren with TNT. Today's video covers our trip to Cape Lookout National Seashore from Knoxville, Tennessee to North Carolina and everywhere in between. Stay tuned. Leaving Knoxville, we headed east on Interstate 40 to 81. We decided to go up through Virginia and back down to North Carolina where we hit rain most of the way. We made it to Cape Lookout National Seashore Ferry um, to hit the ferry in just a little bit. The ferry is right behind us. Um, just woke up. We got here late last night. Sat down, set up camp. I uh, slept in the truck. Didn't really want to set up the tent and everything uh, just for a few hours of sleep. But let's see what we got. We had a few people cancel on us, unfortunately. Uh, we were supposed to be about 11. Went down to about 7 and 6. Uh, things come up we understand so three of us got together we said we're still gonna go so let's we'll see who we got first up we have TNT the 2012 Toyota Tacoma Sport Overland build equipped with a CVT tent next we have Doc in the ZR2 Colorado Overland build equipped with a CVT tent and trailer Followed by Steve and his wife in the JL Rubicon, ground camping the entire trip. So on the way to Cape Lookout Cabins and Camps, uh, we called and asked if we could camp in the parking lot so we didn't have to get a hotel. They said, of course, they even have an overflow parking lot. We got here probably about 11 p.m., uh, stayed up till about 2 a.m., uh, got a few hours of sleep, and yeah, woke up this morning. 6 30 in the morning now it's quite calm and peaceful uh, i'm gonna see what the actual store has see if we need any last minute things before we hop on the very first ferry to cape lookout cape lookout cabins camps and ferry has a store where you can purchase anything needed for your camping adventure they also make deliveries to the island so you don't have to exit the island and then return this store has hunting gear, fishing gear, food, drinks, and ice for all of your camping needs. Before setting sail, we took one more look from shore before looking at the ferry, determining how to load, begin the loading process, and setting sail into the deep blue sea. Cape Lookout's cabins, camps, and ferry service. Ferries differ than most ferries in the area due to its large size and being able to take several vehicles and passengers over to the island at one time. If you have a large group, they can usually stay together, which is one reason we looked into them to begin with. Unfortunately, some of the group did cancel and they were still able to accommodate our reservations to go to the island. Setting sail for the 45 minute boat ride, two and a half miles into the ocean. We didn't waste time, aired down the tires, and got ready for our three day adventure. So it's about a 35 minute, maybe 45 minute drive, uh, boat ride to the island. So decided to come up here, talk to the captain, see what's going on, and go from there. So hopefully we'll see you guys in a little bit. We don't end up like the Titanic, but you never know. The captain did tell us this thing is unsinkable. Pulling off the ferry onto the island, we were finally here. Time to explore, adventure, ride some trails, and enjoy the natural environment. And we are on the island. So, gotta check in, get our passes for us driving on the island, camping and everything. And we're gonna hit some trails. So, should see you guys here in just a little bit. We're gonna go drive around, see the whole island hopefully today, and set up camp. Here we go. We headed north on the island first, hitting the ocean quickly for some photo opportunities. 
check back to the channel soon for a recovery video. One of our members got stuck in the sand right at the shoreline and we had to get him out. It was an adventure for sure and a very stressful situation. We located a campsite that was perfect for us, began setting up so we could enjoy the rest of the evening. Looking at camp setup, on the far left you have TNT, rocking the CVT Mount Shasta Summit Series rooftop tent with the Batwing awning that everyone is sitting under, made by Rhino Rack. Steve is in a ground tent from Cabela's. It looks pretty cozy, there's a little entryway that's pretty nice. And you have the CVT trailer, Doc's trailer, uh, with his Bend Oregon CVT tent. Don't really know which series his is. Uh, it's an older one. They don't have the model name on it. Doc's running his solar, so am I. I only have the two panels on the top of the truck right now. But hopefully we don't need any more. Uh, the fridge is still about 32 degrees, 33 degrees. And we're just relaxing. So night one on the island, I'm going to cook some jambalaya for everybody. I decided I got the Timbo Tusk, let's see if I can cook a big meal. There's only four of us, but it's bigger than usual. So let's cook some awesome jambalaya, I'm um, going to walk you guys through it as usual. Hope you guys enjoy it, I wish you could taste it. Slicing all the vegetables and adding the kielbasa sausage, the jambalaya was almost ready. When he was in the army. Man, was dinner good. So, as you see, we got to clean up, enjoy the night, enjoy the sunset, get some pictures, maybe do some astrophotography. Uh, other than that, just relax. See you out there. We took some pictures of the night sky, of the rig, and sat by a fire around the solo stove before calling it a night and heading to bed. Good morning from campsite number one here at Cape Lookout, National Seashore. Um, we had some crazy storms last night. Winds were getting really bad, so we had to, or I did, I got out, got the awning put up and staked everything down on the annex pretty well. Even with that, the annex was still trying to just lift off the ground. So even with the awning up, uh, we're still gonna cook some breakfast. Uh, for me, it's going to be hash browns, uh, potatoes, onions, peppers, and some sausage. Breakfast potatoes are done. Uh, kind of like a breakfast bowl. Uh, turkey sausage. About six eggs. So. After the morning storms, it was time to hit the beach and the ocean. Get the paddleboard out, try to surf, and enjoy the sunny day while it lasted. Preparing for another stormy night, we sat by a fire, relaxed, and even played some football with some glow sticks. Good morning everybody. It is day three on the island. We just slept for the second night. It was still pretty stormy last night. Uh, supposed to storm till about 10, 11 o'clock this morning. And then we're gonna pack up and head to the lighthouse. Maybe do a little bit more beach driving, get some awesome videos to show you guys and just enjoy the time while we're out here. We are mostly packed up. It looks like there's a storm rolling in. So we're gonna head down to the lighthouse maybe take some of the side roads uh, here there's an old village um, with some towns like a coast guard town or something so go look at that and show you guys and just enjoy the rest of the day while we're out here on the island leaving camp we headed south towards the point in the lighthouse and the coast guard station area riding the beach the main road in the middle of the island and crossing a few bridges along the way
The Cape Lookout Coast Guard stationed opened in 1916 and operated until 1982. It is located near the southern point of Cape Lookout National Seashore, comprised of several buildings to include the main station, a neo-colonial building with a watchtower, equipment buildings, support structures, and a mess hall. We took the road to go see the U.S. Coast Guard Station dock, but were unfortunately unable to see it due to a fire earlier in the year. This fire is pending investigation to determine why and what happened. If you know any information, please call either the U.S. Coast Guard or National Park Service. After leaving the U.S. Coast Guard Station, we headed back to the beach to head to the southernmost point of the island, which is a wide open area for you to drive around on the sand, take pictures, and just enjoy the beach life. Almost time to head back to the ferry, we stopped for one more photo opportunity before hitting the main road, passing the lighthouse, and going towards the dock. So it's time to head off the island. Um, we're going to go back, take a shower at their facilities. Before we get on the ferry, just so we're cleaned up a little bit for camp tonight, get some of the sand off of us. Had an absolute blast. We decided not to go to the lighthouse though. Um, it was a little crowded, so we stood away from it and we went to the big open area where we could take all the pictures and videos and oh my goodness, the open area at the point was fantastic. Uh, it was low tide, so there was more sand to drive on and just enjoy, so. Um, Highly recommend wherever you get on the island at, if you come here, drive out to the point. It is breathtaking once you actually get there. Um, the waves are bigger, um, the wind is a little bit stronger. So, yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video so far. Unfortunately guys, it is time to leave the island. We are loaded on the ferry and heading back to shore to go to campsite number two. Let's say goodbye. Back on the ferry, we didn't waste any time. So once we hit land, we could head towards Oyster Point Campground starting on 70 West and drive through the Outer Banks. Driving south through the Southern Outer Banks, we passed through a couple small towns, which we stopped and grabbed some snacks for camp along the way and enjoyed the view of the ocean in the marshes. So we decided to find a car wash, clean up all of our equipment. You gotta take care of what you have or else it will not last. That is a big rule. It's not an in-depth clean, it's getting the salt, getting the sand, all off the undercarriage, getting it off our bodies, so that whenever we're good to go home and actually do an in-depth cleaning, there might not be as much damage. So, let's see how the guys are doing cleaning.
Oyster Point Campground is just a short drive on a dirt and sandy road that is very secluded in the back of a national park. We were excited that they had a campsite that was large enough for both of our rooftop tents, the trailer, and the ground tent setup. Well, we made it to Oyster Point Campground here in North Carolina for our third night of camping before we head home back to Tennessee. Um, everyone is setting up. Uh, I got the tent done. I'm about to start some chicken fajitas for dinner. Might crack open a cold one and just relax for the evening. So, let's see how everybody's doing. Doc setting up his rooftop tent. Everything's coming together well. Got TNT. And Steve. So Steve has been ground camping uh, all weekend. Staying pretty well. And they're setting their ground tent up right now. Do have a couple fires going. Only because the mosquitoes are terrible. So. Alright, well I got the scottle set up. Make sure everything's going well. And let's start eating. Man, were those fajitas good. We sat by a fire and just enjoyed the evening. Good morning. So everyone has started to pack up and uh, we're about to leave campsite three to head home back to Tennessee. Unfortunately, um, our trip has almost come to an end. We've got about a nine hour drive ahead of us uh, from right here on the coast of North Carolina, back to Tennessee. So, uh, it's a lot different uh, after being on the beach for three nights, wake up and there's dew everywhere and it's just a little stickier of course, but it makes spider it feel webs. like home a little bit. Steve says there's quite a bit of spider webs as well, so. Apparently Doc decided to get up early this morning and he's already packed up. As you can tell, I am not, so I'm gonna go hit that and we will see you guys on the road. We were packed up bright and early so we could hit the road, hit the interstate, and head back west to Tennessee. The drive back home was a little slower due to the rain. It made it about a 10 and a half hour drive from the coast to Knoxville, Tennessee, with a little adventure coming shortly. Crossing the Tennessee state line from North Carolina on 40 West, there's a known trail called Hurricane Creek. Steve and I decided to hit that trail just a little bit to see the cabins and the turnaround area about two miles in. It was nice to get off the pavement for a little bit, especially after the rain delays. When we had reached the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, we knew we were almost home. I really hope you guys enjoyed the trip as much as we did. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you want to see more like it, hit that subscribe button and come on our adventures with us. Can't wait to see you out there.